With increasing industry striking, we're really seeing the impact of those strikes across the board and not just in the organisations where the strikes are actually happening. Generally, strikes tend to happen in large organisations, public sector organisations, but because of the impact of those strikes, it's small businesses being impacted just as much. In this video, I'm going to talk about the wide range of impacts and how you can deal with them as a manager or business owner. Hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm the founder of Silk Helix, and we support businesses with all things HR, people management, leadership, and management training. So let's get into it. Strikes, what are they? Who can strike? When can they strike? And how do we deal with the impacts of that? Firstly, there are a number of rules around who can strike lawfully and when they can strike and what you can do about it as an employer. And in recent years, governments have clamped down on the ability to strike. They've made it harder, more restrictive on trade unions to be able to call strikes, but it hasn't stopped it. What it does mean is that a lawful strike can only be called by a trade union and only when they've had a ballot, which falls in line with all the rules around balloting, where they've got a majority of their membership who are in the affected areas who are voting to say that they do want to strike. They then have to give some particular notices and things around when those strikes will take place and try to negotiate to avoid strikes. Crucially, the strike should only come where negotiations have broken down and there is no other option left to the trade unions. So by the time we get to see a strike happening, there's usually been quite a build up to get to that place. There are also things that trade unions can do short of striking and often that happens things like overtime bans working to rule these can also be done as opposed to a full-blown strike and often members want to do this because it means that they can continue to be paid because that's the important thing so somebody who's out on strike isn't being paid for the time they're out on strike you are as an employer entitled to deduct from wages any money that they would have earned during the period that they are on strike. We can only do that for people who would have been working. So if let's say you've got a part-time worker who wasn't due to be working on the day that the strike has been called, where it's a one day strike, for example, then even if they're joining a picket line or getting involved in any other way, there's no deduction from their pay because there's no loss. So you can only deduct actual wages that would have been earned for the period that this person has withdrawn their labour by going out on strike. It's also important to note that just because someone's a member of the union does not mean that they have to participate in the strike. They may not want to, they may not have voted in favour of the strike, they don't have to. Also, people who are not members of the union could decide to participate in the strike. And as long as it's a lawful strike, they're entitled to do that. You can, as an employer, ask what the intentions are of people, whether they're intending to go out on strike or not, which helps you to make plans, but they don't have to give you their answer. They don't have to tell you what their plans are. Some people will, some people will choose not to. So it can be very difficult for employers to try and plan around it. You can use staff who are not striking to replace the work of people who are where their contract to employment permits that to be allowed. So ideally you'd have a clause in the contract which says, and any other work in any other department that the company may need from time to time to suit business need, something along those lines may well be in the contract which would allow you to ask them to go and do somebody else's job. Obviously we have to make sure it's reasonable. We wouldn't just like pull somebody out of an office and ask them to drive a train. That's clearly not a reasonable and safe thing to be doing. But there may be things like, for example, with the teacher strikes where you might get a teaching assistant who is at work to run the class for the day in place of the teacher. And that would be something that they would ordinarily do anyway. So it would be within their contract to ask them to do that. So we've got the employers who are directly affected. So schools, for example, their teachers go on strike. Some of those schools are having to close for the day some of them are having to close to some of their students for the day. These are the employers who are directly impacted. They don't have sufficient staff to be able to run the service that they are meant to be running. This then has a knock-on impact to other employers. So parents who would ordinarily send their children off to school to be able to go to work now can't go to work because the child needs childcare. So we're left with a situation where the other employers who are not impacted directly by the strike are starting to be impacted. The same with train and public transport strikes. These will impact people getting to work, particularly if you've got a work environment where commuting by train is, is really heavy. So people who work in London, for example, heavily rely on commuting in by train. It has quite a significant impact on those employers when their staff can't get to work. So what can you do about that? Well, 
the impact of the strike is actually going to have quite a big difference in terms of how you can deal with it and what you can deal with it. So teacher strikes, for example, which result in school closures, may well be covered by time off for dependence. Now, time off for dependence is the right to unpaid time off to deal with unexpected incidents. Now, strikes are interesting because they're not always or necessarily completely unexpected. We generally know when they're coming, but then we don't know whether our school's going to be affected. We don't know whether our children in their class are going to be affected. It, it, the range is quite different. And many schools aren't announcing until the last minute, once they've kind of gathered all the information from their staff about whether strikes are likely to be happening, whether they're taking part. We're not finding out until that last minute. So it's likely that strikes impacting schools will impact parents being able to get to work who will be able to take off time under the right to time off for dependents. They may will be requesting holiday as well where they know a few days in advance and they can do that. They should also be trying to sort other childcare so the strikes aren't entirely unexpected. There is a bit of a there's a bit of a grey area there really around that time off dependence, how unexpected are the strikes. They're generally announced a bunch of dates well in advance so we could try and make alternative childcare arrangements. Having said that so are a load of other parents and there's no out of school clubs and things on at those times so it's going to be a case of talking to your individual employees trying to work out who is most likely to be affected, who could work from home, for example, which would enable them to work and have the children there, who is going to take time off as annual leave. All of these things that we can try and work around strikes and enable parents to be able to make those decisions at the last minute, albeit that's a few days before, which is better than the morning of, which is often when we find out about snow um, and snow days from schools, which of course have a similar impact. So anything which impacts childcare arrangements, stops us being able to send children to school, could give rise to time off for dependents. Train strikes is another matter because this is our ability to get to work. And technically under a contract of employment, we're required to fulfill that contract by getting ourselves to work. I would recommend that if you've got people coming to a place of work, do you always have a policy that deals with things like strikes as well as weather disruption, covers all of these things, the things that might impact somebody getting to work and work out a policy that's relevant to you. So we see, for example, in the care sector where we can't afford for people not to come in, we need certain numbers of staff. You may find as a business that putting people up into hotels that are near the business is what you need to do to overcome these challenges. You may also find that you're in a place where people can work from home, even if they don't regularly, and therefore you can make arrangements like take your laptops home so you can work from home, or we try and swap people around to enable it. Again, generally with strikes, we've got an idea they're coming, so we can make these plans, work with our teams. Your staff don't want to be impacted by train strikes any more than you do in the business, so work with them. It would be unpaid time off. If somebody really can't get to work, they can't fulfill their contract, you don't have to pay them for that time. Ideally, they'll have taken holiday or you'll have made some other arrangements. It's not great for people to be losing pay because somebody else is striking, but then that is what strikes are designed for. They're designed to have a wide range of impacts so that people stand up and start talking about the situation that they're campaigning for, that the striking people are looking for their problem to be solved and they need that solved by the impacts being wide ranging enough that we're all talking about it. Forgive the quick interruptions to this video and I will keep it really quick. If you've liked this video, found it useful, you can of course hit the subscribe button but I also want to tell you about our digital courses. In our digital courses, I go into much more detail. The videos are very similar to these. It's me, it's on camera, but there's also downloads, there's sample forms, there's a few sample policies in there as well. All the things that you need to know. We've even got some coming where we've got live classes as well. So check out our digital courses. Details are on screen now and in the description below. Look forward to seeing you on one of our courses in the future. And in the meantime, I'll let you get back to the video. So for strikes that affect someone's ability to get to work, I'll be trying to work with people. We generally know when these strikes are coming, work with people, try and find a way to solve it, try and work as a team as opposed to just coming down hard line on your staff and expecting them to sort it for you. And then the other impact may well be where there's no work available for your team because of striking 
people in another team. So script writers, for example, we're seeing TV shows not being able to be presented because the script writers are striking. The presenters aren't striking, but the script writers are. And that leaves the presenters with no work to do because there's no scripts to read. Now this situation is actually more challenging and potentially more costly for an employer because in this situation, we have a contract to employment which says, I will provide my services, I will work for you, you in turn will provide me with work to do and pay me for that work. That contract is being fulfilled from my point of view in that I am turning up to work. I'm here, I'm ready, I'm able to work. You are not providing me with work. I get why, I get it's because of striking employees, but fundamentally, it's still the same case. The employer is not providing work and therefore the employee would still be entitled to pay for that time. That is potentially very costly, particularly if these strikes go on for a very long time. So whilst you may not have to pay those employees who are striking, you are gonna to have to pay those who you can't provide work to because of the strikes. And in those situations, you might be looking for things like a layoff clause within your contracts. It's why particularly to small businesses where these impacts are huge, we would always encourage you to have short-time working layoff clauses within your contract of employment because that enables you to lay someone off with the statutory guarantee payments, which are very small, so largely unpaid, for a period of time whilst you're managing this other situation and before you can provide them with work again. Now, layoff has got other legal rules around it. I won't go into all of those, but it is an option that's there. Also, your contract should say things like, we have the flexibility to move you to another department to get you to do other work. It may well be that you start asking the presenters to write the scripts. Now, whether or not those scripts will be good enough and all of those things, I'm not gonna get into those judgments. It's something to weigh up as an employer. But if that is the situation, if the situation is that they are there, they're ready, they're able to work and you can't provide the work, you're gonna to have to pay them unless you've got a clause where you can either lay them off on a short time, short period of time, give them shortened hours, so short time working, so say, actually we can't provide you with all of your work, but we can provide you with this little bit. So we'll keep providing you with that bit, but we'll, lay you off around that or it might even end up in redundancy situations where you for a longer period of time simply cannot provide work for them you may find yourself having to make people redundant as a result of the strikes now it's not something we see on a mass scale but it is something just to be aware of around what your options may be and what the implications are now clearly if you're in this last situation do get advice because i've not gone into all the details and everything you need to know around layoff and redundancy there's a whole load of laws and rules around those so be really aware of that and make sure that you do take advice to deal with those in the right way so that you've got a fair dismissal or fair deduction from wages also make sure that your contracts allow you to have these options if you haven't got these options in your contract it makes it so much harder to do so even if you're not in this situation be a great time to review your contracts of employment make sure you've got these options if you need it and if you've got people who can't get to work make sure that you've got you're working with them yes you could not pay them if they really can't get to work it will be an unpaid day. I would try for morale purposes, especially at the moment in a cost of living crisis, losing a day's pay is huge. I will be trying to work with them to avoid that happening, find ways that you can utilize them, that they can work, that you can move things around. It's also gonna be better for your business because it just keeps things flowing as opposed to just stopping work. And bear in mind as well, these people striking are losing a day's pay every time they strike that's a huge impact on them. There's gotta be a real reason somebody wants to do that, especially right now where prices are going up. And also bear in mind that in certain situations like school strikes, parents may have additional rights like time off for dependents. Again, it's unpaid time off, so it's not having a cost impact on you, but of course there is a knock on cost impact of you of the work that they would have been doing not being done. So again, if there's ways that we can work around it and support our teams, that support is always gonna go a long way in terms of morale and how we manage people in the future, how we deal with these situations. So yes, the strikes have a much wider impact than just the people that are striking. We are seeing a knock on effect right through a range of industries and into small businesses who don't recognize trade unions, aren't directly impacted, but the knock-on effects really are. There is a link in the description below with details of how to work with us, how to get advice, how to get your contract sorted, if that's what you want. In the meantime though, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Every single one helps our channel and make sure that you don't miss a single video with all your hints and tips on managing people.